The Out of Bounds Show podcast is brought to you by Live Oaks Golf Club and Roosevelt's at Live Oaks. Whether you're in the mood for a hot lunch or you want to go play a quick 18 with a cold beer, the only choice is Live Oaks Golf Club and Roosevelt at Live Oaks on Highway 49 North. Jackson. Are you ready? Yes! Now live from the Whiskey 61 Lounge inside the Bank Plus Studio. You- Listening to Mississippi's number one sports talk show, The Out of Bounds Show with Bo Bounds. Streaming worldwide live on the Out of Bounds Radio app and on your radio at ESPN 105.9. The Soul. All right, Todd Wade will join us at 8 15. Played at Ole Miss and in the NFL. Hang out with us for a little while. Looking forward to that. You can watch the show on YouTube. Search Out of Bounds Sports. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for making us your SEC football show of choice. In the great state of Mississippi and outside of the state. The Out of Bounds Show brought to you by the Rack of Lamb at Kessler Prime in the Renaissance. Visit KesslerPrime.com to make a reservation. Great selection of bourbon, including Four Roses Single Barrel and Small Batch, and private selection for that matter. Four Roses Bourbon. Be mellow. Be responsible. We're live in the Bank Plus studio, streaming live on the Zone1059.com and the Out of Bounds radio app. Farm Bureau Insurance call in line is 601-707-3750. Twitter handle at BowBounds. And the Mississippi Ag John Deere Tractor text line is 601-885-3776. 885-3776. Blake, Valentine's Day Sunday. That's right. How many guys will drop the ball? Too many. Yeah. But they won't if they stop by the All Lifestyle or Lafleur Interiors. I love the way you think. Okay. So, ladies, we've got you covered at the All Lifestyle Shop in Ridgeland at the Township. And uh, guys, LaFleur Interiors will make it easy for you. Grab and go floral arrangements um, set up for you tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, it's just boom, in and out. Grab and go floral arrangements at LaFleur Interiors in North Jackson by Kroger. And they're also going to have Bloody Marys and beer on uh, on Saturday. It's a little chilly out there. so A lot chilly. <laughs> how are you going to play high school baseball in that? Ooh, like a man. It's going to hurt. It started uh, this week. Don't hit it off the end of the bat because your hands will break. Yikes. I don't know if that's going to work out um, this weekend. High school basketball inside, yes. High school baseball, I don't see it. Yeah, the early it's it's such a juxtaposition because you it's like tough when it's this cold, but at the same time, it, it might still be better than when it's 110. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard. Hard to play those mid-July baseball days growing up in Mississippi. Hey, are you excited about Trevor Lawrence's pro day? I'll be tuned in, 9 o'clock. I could see NFL Chuck um, watching and taking notes. If they Like in a very attorney, uh, you know. Yeah, if the Browns were drafting. Organized, bullet points. 100%. His footwork looks good, arm angle, you know, even though he's throwing against air. But I could see NFL Chuck watching this you can only hurt yourself throwing against air you really don't help yourself right yeah if you have a bad day you're in trouble if you have a good day it's like well you were just doing what you're supposed to do right um i 100 percent believe and if, why are we doing this he's going to the jacksonville jaguars yeah if the browns were being if the browns were the number one pick he'd be locked in trevor lawrence you know that who who would you not get rid of as your starting quarterback to take trevor lawrence for sure i know the top three okay so Mahomes, the three we talked about. Rodgers. Although, would you draft one? Would you draft one if you had Rodgers? That's a convoluted... And let him yes, have but one I'm, retro Yes, but, but not number one. Huh. I'm not drafting... Not Aaron Rodgers. I think Aaron Rodgers still has three, four years left. I mean, he's throwing the ball at an incredible rate. Sure. It's not him that... I mean, they didn't lose because Aaron Rodgers threw the ball poorly this season. His MVP. So, I probably am not drafting Trevor Lawrence number one. But I'm just... Let's take that out. Let's go just for... Who would you start Trevor Lawrence over in the NFL? Who would you take Trevor? And you say, this is my quarterback over the guy that I currently have. So we know the three you wouldn't. Russell, Patrick Mahomes, and Rodgers. Is there any more that you wouldn't? Justin Herbert. So you would still take Herbert over Trevor Lawrence? Yeah. I don't know that everybody agrees with you on that one. That's an interesting one. Like Palazzo we asked about, he told he said Trevor Lawrence. 
Did he on that? Yeah. Two weeks ago? Yeah. Uh, no. You would still take Herbert, okay? Who else? Well, he's already proven to me that he can play. Fair enough. No, I get you. I understand. That's always the question. It's like when Andrew Luck came out. You know, Andrew Luck was supposedly a Hall of Famer already when he was getting drafted, right? That's kind of how they're treating Trevor Lawrence. It is. There's three guys, or four if you want to count Peyton, but, but Trevor Lawrence, Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning, John Elway. That that's you know this kind of can't miss yeah Hall of Fame QB yep those, those since I've been alive yeah and Trevor Lawrence is now in that category and being treated as such so it's interesting Bates says I would, I would take Herbert over Lawrence Jeremy says I'd take Josh Allen over Trevor Lawrence would you Josh Allen just had a statistical career high. However, is that a mountaintop or is that the new plateau? I mean, I could argue Allen. I could argue Dak. These guys are, pro- are proven. But everybody loves Trevor because he's the next thing and he's from Clemson. Right? Yeah. Oh, White Denzel says, I would start Josh Allen, Russ, Aaron Rodgers, Dak, Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, and Baker Mayfield over Trevor Lawrence. There is no, no. way in God's green earth. I-, I like the other ones. I'm fine with the other yeah. ones. Even, Not Baker. Yeah, and I don't know. I love Josh Allen, but I still don't know if this was a peak or if this is the new standard. But I'm not taking Baker Mayfield. What about what from Baker Mayfield have you seen that would make you take him over Trevor Lawrence? Nothing, right? No. Nothing. No. Not there. Give me Stefanski with Trevor Lawrence. I'll take that combination all day. Their offensive coordinator, Kevin, or new head coach, but the offensive mind behind the Browns, Kevin Stefanski. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think what he did with Baker is about Kevin Stefanski, yeah, not I mean, about Baker's- Baker Mayfield. 5'11", 6 feet, Trevor's... 6'4"? Six, six, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, give me Trevor Lawrence all Can day. Can throw it, run it, no doubt. Oh, Do you think it. NFL Chuck would go with that? Or do you think, think he would he be would married to Baker? I think his love for the Browns would make him want to tell you Baker Mayfield, but I think in his heart he knows it'd be Trevor Lawrence. We're going to ask him that question. Let's get him on. We'll have some time before the, the draft. Jade says Trevor Lawrence will have three seasons before he even starts to show potential. No That's way. That's not right. He'll be benched if that were to be the case. Yeah. They'll, they'll, A, Urban Meyer will quit, and B, they'll draft someone else. Sure. Urban's only there to coach Trevor Lawrence. That's right. All right. Good morning. Welcome in. Someone calling the text line. Awesome. Oh, I need to do – that may be me. Hold on. All right. All right. Was that me that okay. – That was – That was, yeah. Was that my computer? Pol- apologize. We're having technical I, I just hung up on them. Yeah, it's fine. Kobe, call the, the, the call line. All right, Farm Bureau <laughs> Insurance call in line 601-707-3750. What? Twitter handle at Bo Bounds, <laughs> Mississippi Ag text line 601-885-3776. It sounded like everybody's alarm at home. It did. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> we, we've had a lot of versatility today. I mean, we talked about my Uber driver last night. Got into Elton John, Prince, and Garth, and Elvis. Hit a little Chris Ralph. Omar Connor. Um, even dropped a Chad Kelly in the SEC at Insider segment at 730. And now we're going through the fact that Trevor Lawrence is throwing today for his pro day in Clemson against Ayer. And evidently, we're all excited about it. So... And Jane Slater with the NFL Network is there, which means who knows how many other people. I'm sure ESPN's there. Oh, there he is. Uh, Todd, what's his last name? McShay? Yeah, Todd McShay is in Clemson for Trevor Lawrence. Pro day against air. Who do we have? Kobe wants to tell us who he would take over Trevor Lawrence. Kobe, what's up? Talk to me. What's going on? What's going on, fellas? I mean, I'll take you guys as three, of course, Russ, Mahomes, Rogers. But I gamble with Lamar, Kyler, you know, maybe Josh Allen, you know, like you guys said, he's going up, but does he stay like this or get better? But as far as just any other quarterbacks in the league, Baker Mayfield got the bravado, but body-wise, Lawrence can run, so... I take him over him, and maybe Jameis Winston and Sean Payton can do something. It's not like Jameis not talented, you know. He's just not the runner like Lawrence, but he built like Lawrence with that type of arm. So, hmm. you know, it's a cu- it's a couple. You know, I'd be like, yeah, I keep this guy over him. But other than that, I mean, 
Thanks for the call. Uh, was that Kobe? Thanks, Kobe, for the call. You were on the Farm Bureau Insurance call-in line. Bundle your auto and home and save with your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Back in a minute. Deadline for Dak Prescott is March 6th with the Cowboys. He'll either sign a long-term deal or they'll franchise him and maybe do a deal later. We'll see how that looks. Out of bounds, 105.9 The Zone, ESPN. Uh, Valentine's Day is brought to you by Juniker Jewelry. Juniker Jewelry Store, Highland Colony in Madison. That's your go-to engagement rings, wedding rings bracelets, necklaces, earrings, all at Juniker. Juniker Jewelry Store, Highland Colony in Madison. 105.9 The Zone, ESPN, WRKS. Mississippi Ag, John Deere Tractor, text line is 601-885-3776. On the Mississippi Ag text line, uh, Michael asks a question about Russell Wilson, what's the latest coming out of Seattle? Well, I don't think Seattle was happy that he went on Dan Patrick and kind of threw the organization under the bus. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't have any offensive line and uh, we need to be more aggressive. Yeah. They haven't gotten me the weapons I need. And Ooh, okay. and, and while I understand Russell's frustrations, uh, maybe that wasn't the right play. We'll see if they can kiss and make up. Um, that would be ideal. I don't think he's going anywhere. I'm not even sure Deshaun is going anywhere. Um, you know, maybe maybe the Texans have to at some point. I can't figure out their hire though. Um, they and, hired the QB coach, I think, right from the yes, Ravens, and their president just resigned. Mm. So it's uh, it's all chaotic in Houston right now. I'm not gonna lie, it's not a good situation. That's what will happen this off season. We'll have the Russell Wilson watch and the Deshaun Watson watch and the Dak Prescott. I mean, that's that's where we are. Those are three big names, and one's a Super Bowl winner, and the other two have played well. And Dak's already got a playoff win and two devastating losses. So yeah, that's where we are on uh, NFL and QBs and and contracts. Trevor Lawrence, it's his pro day in Clemson. And uh, he will be throwing today yeah. against air. 9 a.m. on ESPN2. Yeah. 9 a.m. So there you go. Uh, but I, like you said, it's almost like one of those things like why – this is like the Deion Sanders thing, right? Like can't Trevor Lawrence just be like, oh, you're not the first pick? I <laughs> don't have to talk to you. Like, yeah. So we know he's going to the Jacksonville Jaguars. There's no. I mean, it's not even up for debate. There's no suspense. No. Um, so like why even do any of this stuff? Well, but it's it's great content for the Clemson, NFL Network and for, and for ESPN. It's advertising. Oh, no right? question. Isn't for that Dabba. what it really comes down to? It's Clemson. He, he'll he'll be all into that, right? Recruiting, selling his program, Cru- recruiting right here. Hey, boys, you see see Trevor Lawrence go number one? It's Clemson football, baby. And Deshaun went number one. No, he was a first round pick, but not number one. I think. Okay, he was number ten. I didn't know if it was their second under Dabo at the quarterback position. Let's see. Did Deshaun. he really fall that? That's amazing. Out of bounds, 105.9 The Zone, 12th, ESPN. 12th overall by the Texans. Deshaun Watson was the 12th pick in the first round of the NFL draft. Yeah, 2017 draft. It was Miles Garrett number one by the Browns. God Mitchell, bless this, was, Chuck. this was the Mitchell Trubisky fiasco for Chicago. Remember, they mortgaged the farm to trade up to San Francisco's number two, and then they took Trubisky, That's who, had, right. who had less than 13 starts as a college quarterback. Mm. Took Mitchell Trubisky number two. Uh, the other quarterbacks take it. Well, Leonard Fournette went fourth to the Jag, uh, Jaguars in that season. Good grief. Uh, Jamal Adams was picked sixth. Christian McCaffrey was picked eighth. Patrick Mahomes went 10th. He was the second quarterback off the board. Patrick Mahomes went 10th. Deshaun Watson went 12th. All right, let me give you a stat here from Jordan Reed. Uh, Since 2000, these are the QBs to make 17 or less collegiate starts and become first-round picks. Kyler Murray, Cam Newton, Dwayne Haskins, Mark Sanchez, Mitchell Trubisky. 
uh, Trey Lance and Mac Jones will be great case studies. I don't know where's Trey Lance from. He's Wyoming the North Dakota, no North Dakota State. Yeah, he he he's had seventeen starts, and Mac Jones for Alabama's had fourteen starts. Seventeen, but yeah, he updates that down that thread. Gotcha. Yeah, but okay. yeah, uh, Kyler Murray. And Cam Newton would be the only two of those five that he listed already in the league who had any remote level of success. And Bill Parcells talked about how he wanted his QB to have about 28 or 29. Now, let, let's talk about two guys locally, Eli Manning and Dak Prescott. Veterans. They both started for three years. Yep. Played a ton of games. Um, by the time they were drafted, let's see, what, what were they at? Probably 38 to 42 starts, somewhere in there. Yeah. Maybe a little, you know, give or take. Well, thirteen. Dak went to a bowl game every year, so that's 13 games. Right. So three years of 13 games. So we're looking at a minimum 39. of 38, 39 yeah. starts for Eli Manning and yeah. Dak Prescott. Yeah. Mitchell Trubisky started. <laughs> 13. <laughs> 13 games. Dwayne Haskins. That's that's why when people say, oh, Ohio State's never put out a quarterback. Well, let's slow your roll. They haven't put out one recently, yes, but that doesn't mean Justin Fields will be bad. Justin Fields has played more football than most of the like. JT Barrett never was an NFL quarterback. Cordero, pa- not, uh, what's his name? Cordero Jones. Jones. They, Cardell. Uh, uh, yeah, Cardell, not Cordero Patterson out of Tennessee. Cardell Jones played a season and a half of football before he came out. Like it just didn't make sense. You know, Zach, Justin Thomas will have uh, Justin Fields will have more. Get- it doesn't mean he's gonna be a good quarterback, but it's not like drafting some Dwayne Haskins with fourteen. So I mean, it's not like that. It's a different right. guy. So, but it's remarkable. Trevor has um, well over 40, what, 45 starts as the starting QB for the Clemson Tigers, somewhere in there. Yeah, because you add in every ACC title game that they played in, right. which is 13 games a year. Then you add in at least one playoff game, which is 14 games, and then he made one title. So, yeah, I mean, he's, play, he's played like 14, played 15, 14. Yeah, as much as you could play pretty much in college. So there is something to that most of the time. Yeah. Right. So so when you look at that, I mean multi multi year starter at college, you get at least thirty games under your belt, obviously gives you a better opportunity to be successful at the next level. Is Mac Jones not a first round pick? He'll get draft he'll get over. I know he will. I know he will, but I'm asking you, is he a first round pick? Probably not. But then again, but I But how many of these QBs are? Right. Well, that's they, well, that's what Todd and I were talking about last. Night. It's the supply and demand thing. If you don't have one, it goes up. It goes up. The price you get so desperate. The closer you get to the draft, the, it, you froth at the mouth and you go, "Oh, we got to get a quarterback. We got to get a quarterback. We got to get a quarterback." Because if you don't have one, it, yeah. you're just SOL. And yet we still see guys who know the quarterback position supposedly draft Paxton Lynch. Well, Denver John Elway's a phenomenal football player, right? And he's never evaluated but he's one never quarterback. Never been able to get a quarterback. Not one. Taking Peyton Manning is not an evaluation. <laughs> no, he got he got him at free in free agent. It, but you didn't have to decide if he was good or not. Is my sure. point either? Like he can't, John Elway cannot evaluate apparently because you passed up on multiple but guys. Magic multiple Johnson times. was one of the greatest, if not the greatest, point guards of all time. He's Michael Jordan, terrible personnel. Michael Jordan can't Lakers. draft anyone. Yeah, never could for the Hornets. I mean, they drafted like Michael. I mean, it's Kidd all these Gilchrist. nerds that we don't know. John Snyder with the Seahawks is a general manager yeah. who does a great job. Steve Palazzo. These nerds like Steve Palazzo. <laughs> and we're nerds. I mean, I'm a football nerd. I love it. I mean, I'm not on their their level. I don't know what they know, but I just love the game. Um, who has a better pro career, Justin Fields or Mac Jones? Uh, that's Bama fan is sure that Ohio State has a bad quarterback because of how Fields looked against Alabama in the title game. He says, "No way, Ohio State. No way, Justin Fields is any good." Look what Bama did to him. Uh, that's no, that's that's nonsense. Who would you draft right now if you had to pick one, Justin Fields or Mac Jones? I don't know enough. Uh, I don't like either one. They're both on teams that are loaded with talent. Yeah, and that's stuff. That's why Eli and Dak had to elevate their dudes. You downhill, know what I'm downhill sledding. Ernie Corsi in the book on Eli talks about going and watching him play his junior year when they were playing Auburn at Vault Hemingway. And he said, I could not believe. I mean, Ole Miss had some players, but they weren't loaded at the skill position. That's why he was so impressed with Eli. And he just decided basically that weekend, you know, if it works out, we will we will draft him the number one pick the next year. So there is something to that. I don't feel good about Justin Fields or Mac Jones, but I kind of lean towards Justin. He's got a little more mobility. I don't know. I have to think through that. 
Todd Wade joining us coming up next. The Out of Bounds Show brought to you by Ace Bolt and Screw, powered by DeWalt Tools. New location in Gludstadt, Madison County. So it's live, live from the Whiskey 61 Lounge in the Bank Plus Studio. Check, check, check it out. All right, good morning. Welcome in. Football Friday, Out of Bounds, 105.9 The Zone, ESPN, WRKS. The uh, show is brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance. Bundle your auto and home and save with your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. The Mississippi Ag John Deere Tractor text line is 601-885-3776. And the show is also brought to you by Juniker Jewelry Store in Madison Highland Colony as you get ready for Valentine's Day. That is the go-to for earrings, bracelets, necklaces, and, of course, Wedding and engagement rings at Juniker Jewelry Store, Highland Colony in Madison. Uh, we're excited to have a special guest in studio. We've been trying to do this for a while. We welcome in our friend Todd Wade, played at Ole Miss and in the NFL. And we'll say that Todd joins us on the Coors Light guest line. Todd, good morning, buddy. How are you? Good morning, Bo. Um, great. Um, uh, dinner was great last night. Everything's uh, has been very nice. and Glad to be here in studio, finally. So the rack of lamb was good at Kessler Prime. Yes, it was. Uh, very impressed. Now it was with the food there. It's my first time to go, but also with their service. Uh, they're definitely doing things right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, didn't, didn't you walk back to the back of the restaurant, like you had mentioned, the size of it and uh, what all they're able to, uh, who all the, <clears throat> they're able to accommodate there, but really impressed. We had a good dinner. Yeah, glad we, we got to do this. We've had you on the phone many a times, but mm-hmm. a little bit different deal to get you in the uh, – in the out of bounds um, man cave, and and hang out for for a little while. How's uh, how's Oxford been? Yeah, you know, uh, <clears throat> this time of year, a little slow. Um, it's um, you know everything's good. We have family, all of that um, works good, but um, you know just kind of a still kind of have a little bit of the COVID stuff going on in town, and you know some some regulations and things there. I think it's kind of keeping people from really going out you know as much as they as would as much as they really would yeah uh just kind of in that mode you yeah. know um so i think one, until once they eventually lift some of those things uh which even might even be just psychology of wearing a mask yeah. once that once that occurs i think you'll have everybody out full force hopefully that'll be sooner than later um all right so what would you think about kiffin first year so the offense was super exciting mm-hmm. it was perfect for matt and you know, you had a bunch of skill players, so it was a lot of fun, explosive, lots of points scored. You played on the offensive line. You played with some really good players. What would you think? I was um, I was very impressed. I really was. And I, I never – I've always – I'm kind of anti-offensive coordinator. I'm a little more <laughs> of an offensive line mind, and I'm always thinking that coordinators uh, can, can muck up something good. You know, that's usually uh, – uh, they try to create their own way and um, outthink themselves, um, but he uh, he gets it. He he um, able to really convert first, you know, get first downs, uh, use use utilize the players he has, and is always thinking ahead. Um, very impressed, and you know it. Really interesting. Um, I I did not. It's not what I was expecting you know uh i didn't think uh i think okay which probably just another offensive coordinator but the way he was able to convert fourth downs uh was very impressive and it kept us in a lot of games we probably shouldn't have been in right yeah he's not scared no. uh he, he's going by the analytics and once he crosses midfield it's four down territory yeah for, was, for kiffin there were some uncomfortable moments <laughs> you know <laughs> watching it but uh they they made it happen. I, I was just you know the Alabama game for instance. Uh, they, that was a yeah. game. Well, they where, kept converting. Yeah, and just there were nobody was punting. Right. <laughs> the whole game. Uh, I, I don't know if we. I guess we punted maybe once, but it, it was just we kept we kept going for it. We kind of had to, but we had so much success converting. Um, but you know, it it just it changes up the dynamics of of your play calling and what you're going to be nor- would normally be running on second or third down. Right. Uh, no more. Uh, you have that extra down, and you can you know you can run it on you can run it on third and long. Elijah Moore, 
So, man, is this guy good or what? You mm-hmm. know, he kind of gets better every year and then has just a phenomenal. In fact, we were looking at Zerline. Well, it's on the NFL Network right now. He, there it is. It just um, He's got him at 19. In go, the first round. Going to your Washington football team. That's right. Going to your where you played at the Redskins. Well, so, uh, that's Now, he may not go there, right? I mean, he may sure. go in the second round. But still, that's pretty cool that mm-hmm. he played his way into the discussion of the first round with the year he had. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, he showed sh- signs of it a year ago. Sure. And uh, it, it, but with the, in, this all, in this offense, um, it was a little more focused on him. He was able to get the ball more, and really, they utilized his talents like no other. Um, just highly active on the field, impressive, um, uh, you know, great hands, and hand. you know, route running is just is, is really good. And he's he's kind of what the league is looking for now, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And because we're so pass happy in football, um, so I would think. Blake, worst case scenario, second round. Yeah, I can't imagine how he gets to the third but round. Zerline, for our listeners, who's with the NFL Network, has Elijah Moore nineteenth to the Washington Football Team. Yeah, which is pretty damn cool. That's higher than we've seen. Dane Brugler with the Athletic Drafted Insiders uh, had Elijah in his like seven to ten in terms of where he ranked in wide receivers. Gotcha. He was either like the seventh or tenth, eleventh. You could you could put him anywhere in that number. He wasn't top five, but he was kind of right in that second five, right. which puts you. You know, all you need is one team. All one team fall in love with you, mm-hmm. and then you you're a first rounder. Of course, oh yeah, one, one one team or you know, there's one coach. That's you know, it. Just uh, can, one interview can but really can um, general managers and they they'll sometimes if there's a question they'll they'll lean on a coach for the person they like. Did you? Uh, all right, let's go to that. I like that because now we're doing draft day and we're just coming out of the senior bowl and all that. Um. How many interviews did you have in the spring going into the 2000 draft when you were drafted by the Washington football team in the second round eventually? Well, well Miami. Um, yes. That, a oh, lot that's of, right, a lot Miami. Of, a lot of the interviews, yeah. But it, um, a lot of the interviews took place uh, places out every, where everybody was, the combine. That's right. where you have all your interviews there. Um, never really hit, They do more of that now. Um, but I did go to the Dolphins. I, I traveled down there for, um, for I believe it was a night. I don't think it was more than, I think it was, I don't think it was more than one. And uh, they had a group of us. And uh, some of the players I knew. And it was, it was interesting that out of, all, out of all people to not go out, right. uh, I chose not to. I was a smart one there. Right. Oh, and didn't they do of, something where they? Yes, and they were they were they were, just, they were coming trying to knock on everybody's door the next morning to go tour the facility and meet the coaches, and, uh, and some of them weren't waking up, so they were late getting there. Man, um, can you imagine? Uh, <laughs> hey, the uh, temptation of going down to Miami Beach does that to some people. And you're at a hotel, right? We're a hotel hotel in Fort Lauderdale. Okay, one of uh, Wayne Housinga's um, Marriott <laughs> on on the on the beach, which right. I just saw that just coming out there. You know, I thought I was a king. Did you think? All right, did you go to the lobby and get a beer that night? Yeah, oh yeah. Did I, you, I, now, I, yeah, I did I did technically go out, but, I, but I was in bed at a decent hour. I had some friends from Fort Lauderdale, one guy from college okay, um, that I knew, and a couple of his friends he just wanted me to meet. So he took me to dinner. We might have uh, even gone to a bar for a little bit, but then we – we got, but yeah, you weren't going back. out till no, no. one, two, three. No, no, no. I was, I was, I was up early. But was there any thought? All right, we're, we're visiting with Todd Wade. He, he was drafted by the Dolphins in the second round in two thousand out of Ole Miss. Signed with Tuberville, and then played for also Cutcliffe at Ole Miss. So did you? But did you ever think, uh, hey, they could have people in the lobby? Did that ever cross your mind? It didn't. <laughs> but, okay. but you're right. <laughs> That's yeah. something I probably should have thought about. Yeah. But uh, that would that would actually make sense. But um, I'm assuming they had more things going on, and this this was kind of their big, even though this was their big, you know, bring in the players you're interested in or you right. know something about. Um, but it wasn't everybody. Uh, you know, the, I don't believe anyone else drafted in that class was on that trip except for me. Oh wow! Uh, so so it's just. It's where everything falls in the draft, where people you don't just go, well, I, I met this guy, let's get him. You know, right. uh, there might be someone better that they didn't bring in or couldn't could not bring in. Did they grill you, or would you just call it just kind of a very 
we, easygoing conversation slash interview, or was it intense? I was probably uptight a little bit. Okay. Just, you know, sure. Talking to an NFL coach, and I, I was always like that, talking to coaches anyway. Um, you know, I was, you know, they had my attention. But, you know, we discussed maybe some, maybe some offense, asking about college offense. You know, it was kind of maybe testing me a little bit. We talked about some things, but for the most part, it was just talking about what, what, what they liked, what they liked about me and this and this. And, you know, the, met at the time, Paul Boudreau was, my, was the offensive line coach. And, you know, he ended up drafting me. You know, he liked, he liked, I uh, mentioned, uh, we played South Carolina, you know, and I, he liked what I did against uh, Abraham, um, their defensive end. He was, you know, really good NFL player. Uh, that, that was kind of the key for him. Okay. And, so, did the Dolphins have a first round pick that year? They did not. Okay, so yes. you were their first pick was, in the I'll, second round. Correct. They were they were looking, okay. and it started with Jimmy, and he'd always wanted to do this. And Jimmy he, Johnson for our listeners. With they had the Marino era had just ended. Okay, so Marino and Jimmy both retired months before, right you know, at the end of the '99 season, and they were looking to get more of a balanced attack, and they wanted some. They want to bring start bringing in more attitude and uh, addressing the running game, and that's that was my forte, you know, coming out of co- coming out of college. Sure. And so they want to start kind of beefing up the running game and getting that going. So that was their priority um, in the in, in really in some of the earlier picks. Um, another was a fullback and um, from North Carolina, and you know they were trying to send that message and you know, get that thought process going for everybody in the locker room how it was going to be. I just thought about this, Todd. Todd Wade played at Ole Miss and in the NFL. You got drafted in the AFC East right before the Patriots started their their run. Don't get me started. Oh, I didn't even. I know you and I were talking for hours last night, and I I know that, but I just didn't think about it. I hated the Patriots. I bet. Oh man, and Mike Rabel, who I'd always go up against. Uh, you know, was, Rabel. Oh yeah, current coach at Tennessee Titans, mm-hmm. coaching AJ Brown. He's a good and player, com- competitive, yeah. but uh, you know, I, we got after it. Did you? Yeah, yeah, and I, yeah, you know, didn't like him because he had that edge. He had the bad guy face, you yeah. know, just kind of just always yelling, you know, just run his mouth. And he was from uh, Ohio State. Yeah, I think so. I believe so. Okay, I believe so. But yeah, good player. Uh, but the uh, the number, you know, it was a three four defense. Usually, Belichick would mix it up. Uh, you always have to be prepared for that. They they do variations of the uh, of the of the of a three four and then. Then switched to a four three really quick. So you you always had to be ready. Wow. We played New England. Yeah. You got to play in three super cold places. Jets, Patriots, Bills. I loved it. Did you? I loved playing the AFC East. Um and like every division, and I don't think a lot of people, especially in Mississippi, who aren't used to just um being in a city with NFL teams, uh how competitive it gets within the, the division. Yeah. It's a very competitive and you feel it in the crowd. You know, I, I didn't like jets fans and, you know, just these, you know, just, you know, you just want to make fun of them, you right. know, and you know, that the uh, bills and the, you know, all these people that, cause they would come and, you know, down in South Florida, there's a good bit of New Yorkers and uh, people that live down there. So yeah. you get a lot of that, including New England fans. You know, they right. they bring they bring their, they'd bring their share of fans down for every game. So it was intense, lots of fights in the crowd and all that. But uh, <laughs> but the players feed on that, and you're playing. You know, you're playing the division. So you're going against, you know, each other twice a year. Yeah. So you you have that. And matter of fact, in my rookie year, we went against um, the Colts three times. Played them in the playoffs. Really. That was when uh, Indianapolis was still in the AFC East. I'll be Blake. How about that? She lose, was that I guess that was Peyton Manning in two thousand, right? When you lost mm-hmm. to him in, in the no, we divisional round. Oh, you beat him. Yeah, okay, so who did you lose to in the divisional round in two thousand? Do you remember? Jaguars. We, uh, and that was the year before. Got year it. Four, oh, the got Raiders. There. It was the Raiders. We're at the Raiders. That's right. Oh, that's, wow. Tw- it's, yeah. It was. It was really unfortunate. We come out. We come out early and we fumble the ball. They take it in. Um, oh, just, they had a 90 just, yard pick six. Yes. The Raiders had a 90 yard pick six. Yeah, in that well, game. that, yeah, Damn. that too. <laughs> sorry, so, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it got like that. Uh, it was just, it was just the team just imploded. 
Uh, you know, I, I would say that, man, honestly, the, our defense was was top notch number one in the NFL, but they slipped that game as well. So it it was just bad all across the board. You know, we just did not show up um, the way we should have, and that we and we we had our chance. I think you know we we're probably just as talented as the Super Bowl team. I think which two thousand would have been the Ravens, I believe. Okay, and we Man. beat the we beat the Ravens that year uh, in Miami during a tropical depression. It was, like a, it was like a tractor truck show out there. It really was. And I uh, remember, um, remember the D tackle, the, um, um, for the Ravens. Yeah. Big, big white guy. Um, Saragusa. Oh Tony yeah. Saragusa. He eventually did TV work yeah. on the sideline. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tony Saragusa. Glad to know he's still around. <laughs> he, uh, he was a big, big dude. And, uh, it's funny kind of see on tape when you're watching the end zone cut up and you're seeing, yeah. you know, seeing the uh, teams and he kind of, had a little kind of little penguin run to him when he when, when he'd run. Yeah, he was a bad body player, but he was, was able player. to play. He was a good player. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, big big dude. But I remember he, he, I, I play was outside zone running away from me, and I remember just cutting him um, on the backside, and him just falling down, falling down in the mud. But it was just like it's like six inches. It felt like you're just run with big clubs on your cleats, uh, and him him, him were just kind of spinning out in the mud trying to get up. <laughs> so you you go to Oakland in your rookie year mm-hmm. for your for the second playoff game. I'm pretty sure that was probably a crappy stadium. Do you remember? Or you just remember it was packed? I remember it was packed. Yeah. Uh, it was, and they're and nuts. They're nuts. And getting ready for that game, watching film, and I mentioned the end zone cut up because you can see, you know, vertically on the field. Mm-hmm. So you can see if you're if a team is getting um oh, they're actually watching the where I, one of the games we were watching was the Dolphins, I think the year year or two before there. Um, so it was some of the same guys that were on the offensive line. So they were watching some film versus the Raiders at the Raiders. And you could see the the back of the end zone. They had a they had a referee on a noose and they were jerk you know, big big dummy and they were jerking him up and down, but it looked so cool on tape, just kind of intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> like, and you're like these fans oh, yeah. are nuts. Oh yeah, and then they they, they wear <laughs> the spikes. Dan Mar- uh, then you see Dan Marino, the dummy, drop, uh, and they're jerking him around. You know, just uh, it it was wild. Well, and back then, so in that the fame, what is that the craziest stadium you played in in terms of atmosphere, or what would fall into that category? Definitely in that category, I would say. Um, you know, maybe not, maybe not the loudest. Uh, well, well what would, I mean, what would, what would you put up there in that, in terms of fervor and excitement and just in, intensity of being at, at an away game? Cause Miami never had the intensity that, I mean, they, it's just a different type of fan base. They don't have the same level that like y- yeah. Oakland, no. even the dog pound. At is that, and I'd like Dolphins, to get Todd's thoughts. Dolphins fans were there when I, when I was playing, you know, yeah. it, it would, it would be sold out. Yeah. And they get, but you know, it, no, it's it's not that yeah. kind of intense. Well, you played the because Jets. it's a laid back. It, it's it's when you say it's because it's a beach town and it's got that laid back vibe where the only thing to do in Buffalo is to go to the game and raise hell. Correct. Like San Diego, Correct. San Diego's fans have never cared enough to be right first. because there's yeah. just so many things to do. Yes, most most of the Dolphins fans in the stadiums are going to be more natives. Yeah, you know, people who were at least at least born there right. or second generation or above. Uh, that you know, that's just uh, a lot of your international people living in, you know, sure. They're not, you know, Russians, Italians, people living in Miami beach. Just, this is not their culture. They're yeah. just not going to go do that. But, um, they've reached out to that. They've actually added a club into the Miami stadium Smart. to do that and bringing, Smart. bringing in models and all those things and just selling more alcohol and things like that to make right. more money. But they, it, they, they have done things to kind of reach out and kind of get that community too. But it's, but you know, when, when the winning gets good, though, the Cubans come on board too. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. It's you can always look at the Marlins games, see what happens when, when yeah. they pick it up. It's you know it gets it gets, it gets pretty wild. There, there is something to that though, Blake. Yeah. Warm weather in yeah. the beach. It's just not as intense as Buffalo, Cincinnati, Cleveland, yeah. Green Bay, just because of where yeah. they're located. Even weather, the you know. Jets, when they were bad, still had fans that would literally like. Sh- chop their faces off to see them win a game. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. it was remarkable. <laughs> sure, sure. So, yeah, I mean, you saw that. And it's it's we, like we talk about with Texas, right? Texas has a good program, but their fans, we're ta- like talking college, the fans are different than 
LSU, Auburn. Sure. Al- it's a different quotient of buy-in. Right. Mm-hmm. I think that's the same thing in the NFL. Yeah, Kansas City has, has a little bit of that, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, they, have, they have a really good fan base. Always loyal. Always Every time I played there, it was packed, um, whether they're good or not. So yeah. if you can kind of call them, the, which I would say the South Carolina fans, which I think are the part use what I experienced in college, were the best ones yeah. in the SEC. Just really? They, they were my senior year. I think they went 0-11. And they still put 78, 80,000 people packed in the stadium, right? Is so you wouldn't going? put LSU fans up. Like, you would say the best fan base you played in front of in college is South Carolina? I do. I, you, I'd, they'd have been number 12 on my list because I know there were only 12 teams when you played. Yeah. They'd have been number 12. I really well, don't. Well, or 11 right. after Vanderbilt, right? Well, like, well yeah, you, you kind of have to go there, right? Yeah. You know, they, they don't really show the whole crowd during, a, during, during the game. You don't really get it. But I didn't realize that. They haven't that. figured it out. And they were very, very loyal. And that, when I, it really hit me, I could not believe it. I was on the field, the fourth quarter, or no, I was off the field in the fourth quarter because they had the ball, and they got a like a first down or something like that. I, don't, I think we, I think, I don't remember the score. They may have scored three points. I don't remember, but it was like forty something to zero or three. You're blowing and them out. We're blowing them out. Okay, and they get a first down or something. The crowd just, the, you know, got on the microphone. You know, that they they. they Gets rocking, and you're like, "What is going <laughs> on?" And I'm already yeah. thinking about getting on the plane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah, I Lou never Holtz. would have guessed that. Yeah, no, it, they they sold out their stadium yeah. for years, even as yeah. a loser. I mean, I remember it rocking under Spurrier, but that was like a brief five winning. year period. Exactly. No, exactly. Even prior to that, with Lou Holtz, Sparky Woods, that. all these coaches that didn't win. I mean, Lou kind of got him on the map a couple of years later. Todd was gone, but Blake, when I went over there, no. Two, or for a, for the away game, it was that's interesting. Packed. Never would have, yeah, never would have put that yeah. up there. Yeah. Which, but in no two, probably wasn't much different than I mean, you know. They probably won a little more games, but right. I, I don't recall no, they them weren't being that good. very good then. No, nah. but gung ho. So interesting. You you go to Oakland, and there, but you're in you're in a division. Well, the Colts were in your division too, mm-hmm. so we, you got Peyton twice a be, year. Yes, we so we put, played them in two thousand. We played them twice. We I learned a valuable lesson when we played them the second time in Miami. This guy, the Stevens event, never heard of. Looked kind of like a scrub, but who am I? I'm a rookie. I wasn't really taking the guy serious enough on film. It's like okay, I got got you know got lazy, and he ended up getting a sack or maybe even two on me in that game and. Um, was it Freeney? No, no, no. It was not. I was a no name guy, and but he was a older veteran. He had been playing for a while, right? And you know, I was so embarrassed. Um, and we I was lucky enough to get to play them again in the playoffs, and I was very prepared and played well against them. But you, know, you can't ever, you know, spin in a bell. You can't judge a book by its cover. Those guys are the longer you play, the smarter, you, the better player you are. So that was a lesson. This is a very good lesson. That all these guys can play. Absolutely. Yeah. Todd Wade in the house. You can watch the show on YouTube. Search Out of Bounds Sports. He'll join us uh, this next hour, too. Out of Bounds, 105.9 The Zone. Todd Wade played at Ole Miss and in the NFL. We're excited to have him live in studio. We're streaming live on the Out of Bounds radio app, thezone1059.com. And you can watch the show on YouTube search out of bounds sports guys don't forget that the floor interiors has you covered for valentine's day they have grab and go floral arrangements for you tomorrow grab and go floral arrangements for you tomorrow plus bloody mary's and beer at the floor interiors in jackson by kroger we'll be back in a minute 